Welcome back, you mad modelers. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, just been a little bit busy lately. Anyway, I've been eyeballing these things on Amazon and AliExpress and eBay. Uh, they run about 200 to 250 bucks. Now, if anybody has been watching my Sop with Camel build, they will see that I made a whole bunch of custom parts in there on my bigger lathe and my bigger mill. There's my mill and there's my lathe. Now I know most modelers probably don't want to get into that kind of expense or room for that type of machinery. So I thought what the heck I'm gonna go ahead and buy one of these and since I'm buying it I'm going to do a review, and you're going to get a very honest opinion from a journey-level machinist, okay? All right, so it came with a few extra tools. It came with some collets and some hold-downs to put this thing on its base. A uh, couple screwdrivers. This screwdriver's point is a little bit too pointy, so I need to take a little off so we don't strip out these Phillips head screws. And it came with three end mills. Now, it didn't come with any real nice tiny end mills, so that could be a problem. Of course, we've got the operator's manual. And we have a 12-volt uh, power supply. Boy, that that's a real humdinger, isn't it? What does that say? 3 amp, 12 volts. Wow, that is not a lot of power. But right out of the box, this thing is really loose. I've even spent some time to tighten it up in this area, but it's going to take a lot of work. There's, uh, there's regular gibs on it here and here, which have not been set, so those need to be adjusted. Same thing for your cross slide and your saddle. They need to be set. Okay, I've tightened up the gibs on the cross slide and what you'd call the saddle down here. And all in all, it got it got pretty tight. And there's there's a little bit of lash in the gears, in the lead screws, but you can take that out by adjusting this nut and then clamping it in place here. I found that out on this wheel. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that we're straight. So I shouldn't have any gap all the way across even to the, the tower itself or the z-axis and that looks pretty good to get to those screws to adjust that you've got to slide this all the way out and then there's two screws that go through to that nut plate right there okay it's all pretty much tightened down but I have well this this is pretty solid here and of course it puts some strain you know it's a little bit stout to to move it but that's okay because you don't want a lot of backlash in it. My only concern so far is up here. Right down in here is like a series of little locking screws that when you turn this screw, they kind of bind against each other and it's supposed to lock this in place in that channel, but it is really weak. I think there could be a better design to that and get rid of the screw and make a shaft that comes up here to a handle so you can lock it and unlock it without having to look for a screwdriver. This is the mechanism that's supposed to lock the z-axis in place. And you can see as you tighten up this screw, these are supposed to kind of like grab both rails but it does not work. No matter how much I try to tighten that screw, this thing really has a lot of play, and I'm afraid when that end mill goes to bite into the material, it's going to go, Ert! so uh, that's, that's really got, that's, that's a major problem. Um, I'm going to have to think about that. Okay, I've oriented them this way. We'll try that, see what happens. Well, that helped, but now we have a problem here. Okay, it was the same story with this connection here 
as it was with back here that screw with those funny blocks on there so I did rotate them to where they're alternating and it seems to be a lot tighter um, if you're going to use those Phillips screws make sure you've got a screwdriver that fits those screws nice or you're going to strip the heads out and then you're going to be in a world of hurt uh, you may even be a good idea to replace those screws with socket head screws at, at a good hard rating all right here's another good one if you can see that the run out on that collet is atrocious i don't even have to put an indicator on that to see that it's out a good five to ten thousandths so keep that in mind okay let's try a cut i'm going to try to hold the phone and do this one-handed this ought to be interesting. Yeah, a little chatter because she's loose. This is aluminum. It is a somewhat, I don't know. About as deep a cut as you'd want to make, maybe. And it's really not that deep. But it will cut. I'm sure that if you worked with it and got some more play out of it, it would quit doing that. But half of it is because of the run out on that spindle. Now, let's try the other axis. Chatter, 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 but it is cutting. And it's actually holding its Z height, which is a good thing. And there we go, we're out of the material. See if I can get the phone in there close enough. You can see it's it's a fairly deep cut. If you took a lighter cut and maybe a smaller end mill, it might do some pretty fine work. But I think as far as building model parts, I think it'll be all right. I mean, you get what you pay for. And this is a lot better than having to file them out by hand or use a Dremel or something like that. I might even try making some parts on this, some legitimate parts. The regular brush DC motor, it doesn't have a whole lot of torque, and if you tighten that belt too much, look what happens. It slows it right down. The uh, brushless motor um, modification or upgrade would be well worth it, especially on that lathe. Mine came with a bent handle, so I'll have to straighten that out. Uh, other than that, everything looks okay. It's got a little bit of lash in the lead screws. The vise, I don't know. I'm going to have to put an indicator on it and see how true it is on that on the, the fixed jaw. Because I really don't hold out a lot of hopes on that thing being really perpendicular or whatever. But as long as you're out making high tolerance parts... I think this thing might be all right. Now, I just, when I looked at this, I also saw that they had a lathe. And I just ordered it from Amazon. It should be here tomorrow. And I'm going to see if I can combine the two. I'm going to remove this here. And I'm going to put the lathe bed in there and see if I can make a mill turn machine for about 300 bucks. No, maybe 400. 400 for lathe and mill for a modeler i believe it was within most modelers price range today and if this thing performs the way i think it's going to perform it would be a halfway worthwhile investment but we'll see as we get going i'm going to cut some parts on this and we're going to find out after i tighten it up 
it would, really wouldn't be that difficult to get another pulley and put a brushless DC motor in there, like off of your little RC planes, use a servo controller into your uh, speed control, and you can mount this right to the front for speed control, and it would give you a lot more torque. Looks like this thing is made for high RPM, which I'm not a fan of, if you're going to be cutting soft metals, especially aluminum, that's going to spall up the aluminum on these cutting bits, especially on a four-flute end mill. They, they like to rub and they like to ball that aluminum up, on, aluminum up on there. And it's also going to melt the plastic. But if you don't want to modify that part, for about 10 bucks, you can get yourself a DC motor control right there double side tape it to the front and Bob's your uncle you got a speed control so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna see how this works I'm going to see if this e-flight power 10 1100 kV motor will fit inside the headstock on this little mill to drive the spindle this is the motor out of the headstock it is just a brushed motor, no big deal. We're going to take out those two screws, and you see these screw holes right next to it? Those are 25 millimeter spacing, and that fits perfectly with the two screws right here. So no modification of the mount is needed. However, I would mount, I would mill. Get that in focus a little bit out around here so that when you put this pinion on it it'll clear if you clearance this so that that pulley will fit down in there don't go too deep or else you're going to be interfering with the tension screw but all you need is another sixteenth of an inch or so because it brings the belt up a little higher, which means you've got to adjust this, which means that if it's up too high, it's going to rub on the back side of this case. But it is so close, you really don't need to take a whole lot off. You could maybe even take just a little bit of the back side off of this pulley. Now, this is a 5 millimeter hole to fit a 5 millimeter shaft on the end of this motor. Okay, the motor's mounted. I have the wires coming out this area because there's not enough room here where the stock wires came out. It's another place you may want to modify so that you can get uh, the wires to come out of the case. If it was me, I would actually just bore a hole here in the back side and have them come out and put your speed control back here. And then have your servo tester up here. The belt tightening screw still works I did not put the mounting screws in here yet because I just wanted to see if this idea would work and it sure does this works like a charm okay as you can see 12 volt power supply into a servo tester is running the motor And we're getting great response and good torque. This is going to be a big benefit on the lathe. Now here's one advantage too. If you go this route, you don't even need the power supply. If you got a nice big three cell battery, you could take this with you almost in your field box. Okay, so this is my overall impression with it so far. You get what you pay for. I think it has some potential. Um, I think some of these Gibbs, they're, they're nylon on the adjustable. I think if you went to some like brass Gibbs, it would tighten it up a lot. Uh, it's going to take some modification to do some real fine work. Uh, I think one modification to me would be to put the brushless motor in here because the RPM that it's putting out isn't quite fast enough for tiny end mills but it's too fast for larger end mills 
But what you've got here can work as an intermediate range. Uh, join me next time. I'll post another video on this after I get the lathe and see what I can Frankenstein out of the two of them. So please like and subscribe. Uh, help this old geezer out. And I'll talk to you guys again.